Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first episode of Meta Minute, a Jurassic World Live podcast where we'll have a chill and friendly conversation about the game. We'll talk about stuff from game design, battles, meta spawns, moves to hybrid design, strike events, nice shop deals, and just some everyday Jurassic World Live stuff. We'll have guests on from MetaHub and the Jurassic World Live community in general. So without further ado, let's introduce this week's guest. So first off, we have friend of this channel and fast commenter, Dwebel. Hello. MetaHub writer, MN Brian. Hello. MetaHub mods, Nathan, Logan, and Rebecca. How's it going? Hello. Hi. We also got our data mining consultant, JWS. Hello. So let's get into this. Earlier this week, uh, Tuesday, in fact, we got version 1.4. The big theme of all this was flyers, but those weren't the only updates to the game. We got sense, event drop reworks, further anti-spoofing action, minor spawn changes, dino changes, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So to start off, uh, let's talk about this update. So how do you guys like the update so far? That's pretty good. It's uh, the... There's been a big change when it comes to having to go to parks every day that you can get your spawns from your own wee area. Yeah. Um, it's it's honestly pretty nice that the park, like the event spawns and the um, normal supply drops actually have like different coin amounts so you actually get more coins and that's honestly super useful for upgrading things quicker. It's nice not having to run to the park in the next town over. I can actually go into my local town and get the event drops instead of having to actually go to a park. And it is definitely nice being able to see the daily amounts listed plus the scent capsules and the flyers are going to be a huge change too. Not to be negative here, but I was expecting a little bit more in the patch. But uh, everything that was added has been a great change, I believe. Um, all the park spawns, like they said, being able to see you know, where how close you are to hitting your caps every day, sync capsules, everything's a huge improvement. Um, it is kind of a relief not too much change, though, because it means I don't have to memorize near as much of the new information. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's been it's been really interesting. I mean, obviously Ludia is doing a really good job at actually listening to um, you know what everybody's saying on the forums. Uh, it's not something that we see a lot from you know other developers that will remain nameless uh, for other <laughs> games that are similar to this. Um, so that that part has been really encouraging. I mean, the, the events like the supply drop change and the uh, uh, really everything that they've added. It seems like it was in part from comments. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, on that note that a uh, 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 double mentioned, do you guys think that this was like as big of an update as say 1.3 or 1.2 or was this more of a smaller update just in terms of the content that we've got? Um, I don't think I... it changed the meta as much as we we were hoping it would as far as the tank meta, but it's still it's still fairly decent. Hmm. Yeah. It's just a lot of quality of life improvements makes the game a lot easier for a lot of different people. Yeah, that's true. Just you know, the spawn changes, the uh, balances—they weren't like as huge as the last patch, but we still got some stuff. So uh, uh, let's talk about that. So about the uh, spawn changes, uh, we the uh, Meta Hub just recently published the new spawn changes in one point four. So. I kind of want to get your guys' thoughts on that. It's a super minor update to spawns, but uh, how does that um, change anything if it does? Like I said, I'm a bit relieved they didn't change too much because I had it all memorized before and I don't have to re-memorize it now. But um, the locals are pretty well balanced. I feel sorry for anybody living in Local 3 because it's uh. easily the worst no matter what time of day. <laughs> hey yo. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunate. Let's see, because I remember that I created at least a couple points on my Google Maps for certain locals, and 
I have all of them in my radar distance. That helps a lot. The um the largest change in the locals was local two and local four. Um, local four used to have uh Draco Rex. Local two used to have Spinosaurus, and they swapped those two. Uh, you guys think like why would they do that and not like touch the other locals? I, I don't know. That was kind of disappointing to me too. I was really hoping for some of the night spawns to, to switch to day spawns. I mean. It, everybody always talks about how the meta is so rough with, uh, you know, uh, Stego, Deus, but, like, the whole reason it's like that is because you have the most common components during the day uh, for that hybrid, so. Yeah, Stegodius is still going to be an issue, and now Stego sort of spawns at night, too. Um, They completely, <laughs> they're doing their best to eliminate Ineasuchuses in the meta, it seems. They, like, <laughs> threw them all into parks. <laughs> don't remind me. Please don't remind me. That's how I know <laughs> Ludi is listening to what we ask for. <laughs> Sorry, oh. Rebecca, you're going to have to find a new, uh, you're going to have to find a new dino to uh, farm all the time. This hurts my heart. Uh, so, we also got uh, Mono Gen 2 and Dime Gen 2 as global spawns at the moment. Uh, that's significant since Monometrodon isn't the greatest dino ever and there are, there's quite a few dinos that are better than that it's stats aren't so great um, but I remember they did mention they said they will temporarily have Mono Gen 2 and Dime Gen 2 spawn globally so does that mean this is like a temporary uh, or is this like more of a temporary uh, migration maybe so they might have another migration soon. I, I kind of hope so because uh, you know, obviously, I want to see. I'm in local four, <laughs> and on the border of local three, so I'd love to see uh, some different stuff in in those locals. Yeah, living between local one and four is nice because on one side of my house I have local one, the other side I have four. But some of it is kind of irritating seeing all the time, and. Also, Dime Gen 1 and Mono, I mean, Dime Gen 2 and Mono Gen 2, I haven't really saw a big increase in spawns, besides the fact that I can find them outside of parks, Yeah. and they're actually global, but I still haven't saw many spawns, I think, even with Saint Capsules, I think I've only drawn in one or two, so I'm not even close to the hybrid anyway, because I never bothered with Dime Gen 2, but I would like to see a change in dinosaurs around my area. Is there anyone else that's been pretty diluted too? I mean, it seems like the flyers and with those two that it, it's a little harder to seek out what you want. Yeah. There's... Yeah, definitely. It's uh, kind it's... of... Oh, mm -hmm. It's kind of weird that there's only one pterosaur hybrid even though it was the main thing of the update, adding two new animations and a third one that for some reason wasn't added to the update that that is quite weird and speaking of uh diluting spawns they finally released brachiosaurus and as to no one's surprise it's global except it's a night spawn so it dilutes all the baryonic spawns i personally i've seen three brachies since the, since the update and every time i see a brachy oh that could have been a baryonyx <laughs> oh, no. we need it we need a baryonyx event we need it when, when honestly like two, right honestly i still haven't even saw a brachy in the wild yet um i haven't you know i've been out i've been out a couple times i've darted two berries and a couple other random night spawns that have popped up, but I still haven't even saw a single Brachiosaurus at all. No, me neither. Um, mm -hmm. Well, there, um, nothing touched the global day spawns. I really doubt they'd ever take Rex off global at, like, even night. They could, like, shift him from night to day to all day, but I really doubt they're gonna ever take Rex off global. I feel like Rex is too iconic to ever be taken off. But yeah. uh, going back to the night spawns, I've seen two of each since the update. Granted, one of the Brachies was from a scent capsule, actually, not a regular spawn. That's that's not bad. Have any of you gotten a dual spawn? 
from an epic capsule. Happen from time to time. Oh, lucky you. I got a few, but it was only commons. It was an epic ink or epic ascent, but it was only the commons that dual spawned. That kind of sucks. Hmm. I have got a couple duels on rare, but it usually only happens when I'm moving and right at the end of the capsule, too. It's never been at the beginning of a capsule or in the middle of it. Yeah, apparently they, uh, you have to move to get dual spawns. And um, one more thing about uh, spawn before we move on to capsules. Um, they threw in Trandon. It's a park spawn along with Quetzal, so... Hmm. Just seeing Gryposuchus is everywhere. We could see Tyranna, which isn't the most useful thing in the world, but a lot of people like Tyrandon. It's quite an iconic uh, flying reptiles. I almost said dinosaur, but oh, no. yeah. Um, so that's quite nice. But they, uh, but they threw Alanka and the other thing, which no one here can pronounce. Amber, um, uh, whatever. Amborgeria. Ar Aramborginia enough <laughs> uh, behind the uh, the arena exclusives and they also did not even release the other one the one that starts with the D Sun Gia was whatever I, I tried to look up the pronunciation and there was nothing <laughs> good job I'll, I'll just so the pronunciation I, I honestly thought that um then Morphodon was gonna be a the aviary exclusive when I kind of when we kind of found out about the aviary I knew that was either going to be I thought it was either going to be Tyrandon or Dimorphodon because they were the ones to dress squirrels that actually came out of it but for some reason that didn't happen which is well, well I'm kind of curious if they're going to put Morphodon out Whenever Dime Gen Two and Mono Gen Two disappear from global spawns, um, because if they really do do a reshuffle, whenever those disappear, then it'd be the perfect time to put it out too. But then again, we did have quite a few new dinos this patch, so they really want to like throw like uh, I think we had the most new dinos this patch. Yeah, not counting the hybrids. I'm wondering why they teased it though. Like why it's in the um loading screen if it's not if they didn't want people to know about it. It'll come out sooner or later, um but at the moment we just uh don't have them. But anyways, uh, uh moving on. So this um like about this in this update, just your favorite feature. Mm. I like that I have not I have not fought a spoofer in the arena since the update, or that I can tell. That's one. Yeah, that's a pretty that's big the best one. one. It's game changing. It really is. Definitely Small a huge game of are very game changing. Definitely a huge quality of life improvement with that. Um, but I think scent capsules are my favorite just because I'm able to focus on certain spawns more, just increase spawns while I'm out and about anyway. Yeah, and they're cheap. I mean, that was the thing that I was always frustrated with is like somebody who only has a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks. I mean, you know, in in cash, in game cash, uh, it, it's hard to find things to spend it on. You're not gonna buy darts, you know. Mm. I remember. Well, and also, also, you can sit here at work, and you know, if you're not busy at work and you have nothing to do, you don't have any dinos within darting range, but you can't leave to go get any. You can pop a capsule or if you're somewhere that you have to sit there and there's nothing around at all and still pop a capsule and at least get some dinos you're not going to get quite the amount if you're moving around but you can still get one every two minutes even sitting in one spot mm. it does seem like the scent capsules are a huge hit this uh yeah great way to farm yeah, it's so, exciting to see what else they're going to do with them. I mean, obviously, there's more pieces to the scent capsules that are coming. I did, like, mention they're going to have, like, family-oriented um, scent capsules. Like, they'll have, like, Ceratopsian scents. 
uh, you know, sore day. Uh, play back. So we should expect them to come soon, sooner or later. I'd, I'd be really surprised if they don't throw out a Tarandon one, a Flyer one. Uh, well, so. yeah, that's probably the first one. That yeah, ex that, that makes a lot of sense. But um, yeah, um, uh, spe speaking of uh, sense, um, what his thoughts on uh, which ones to use, when to use them, and where to use them? Because I've, I've seen quite a bit of debate on commons versus rares versus epics. Mm. Um, commons are good if you can't spend, like, if you don't have enough, like, I've gotten multiple epics from common ones. Mm -hmm. I We don't really have um, spawn data on common ones. Um, uh, when we were looking for them, we only found rares and epics, yeah. which didn't really make a lot of sense, but when you think that it could probably be because the common ones are just the base spawn rates. Mm -hmm. How about rare ones? What do, what do you guys think about rare ones? Rare ones yeah, never ever are what I think one. the biggest bang for you. Can't tell. See, I disagree. I, when I did a rare uh, versus a common, like you, you got to consider the fact that you buy one, you know, five commons for whatever fifty cash, and you buy one rare for two hundred. So that means you'd you'd run twenty commons before one rare. And on average, mm -hmm. when you see five spawns on each of the common capsules, I feel like I'm seeing at least you know five rares over the course of twenty capsules and getting way more common DNA. I think rares are the worst deal out of the three. I agree. Yeah, honestly, because I used, I got one rare. Whenever they dropped, I bought a pack of each. And my rare, I got two rares in 20 minutes. And I can get three, four, five rares in that time just off of the common scent capsule instead of buying a rare one for the same price. Oh, mm-hmm. You can buy the common four rares just from that. the cash that you get from your stops every day. And, um, uh, also, when looking at the rates for uh, when we're comparing Epic and uh, Rare Sense, the Rare um, the Rare capsules have very low Epic spawns. They're, they're, um, I don't know if these are like base Epic spawn. No, they're not base Epic spawn rates. These are way uh, lower than that. So they have super low epic spawn rates, and their rare spawn rates is just 1% higher than the epic capsule rare spawn rate. So it really doesn't make too much sense to buy uh, the rare capsules unless it, if someone like really wants just to target rares epics for some reason. I guess you could do those. The, the um, epic ones I've had a lot of luck with, though. I, mean, I will go into local one and and just walk around and use an epic, and it it's worked well. I mean, I've pulled a couple of Sinoceratops and a couple of uh, uh, whatever the other one is, Kentro or not, yeah. and yeah, T Rex. Yeah. yeah, I had I had a lot of luck with my epic. I mean, they're not cheap, but I mean, it's it seems like they're still a better deal than the incubator. I mean, when I did the DNA count for the epic spawns, it was still more DNA for Epic than I would have gotten out of a, an incubator that costs five times more. I feel like if you're darting well, especially for VIP players, the scent capsules blow any incubators out of the water. Yeah, I agree. Well, and also to go with that, you can pop the Epic or Epic, or if you have a rare, you can go from local to local and you can get the different rares, be rares and Epics between each local. It's not like it's just tied to the first local. Yeah. Because I went from uh, my local, I went from local one to local four just to test it, and I got an epic from both of them, and it's the epic specifically for the local. It wasn't like it was all from epic one or all or all from local one or all from local four. And it does seem like any part of your larger circle is in a different local, and that becomes part of the pool. I mean, that's what I've seen. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I Much better supporting. to be able to target what you need. I was just about to uh, talk about that. Um, because incubators, 
You get Gripasuchus in that thing. <laughs> and that's a lot of yeah, Sometimes the blue incubators are okay. I mean, because they're a little cheaper and at least they're a little more focused. Uh, you you kind of have an expectation for what you're going to get. But I, I even, you know, the Sun Capsules, I probably won't buy anymore. I'm going to go pop an Epic Sin at a park. I'll be right back. <laughs> get it. <laughs> Yeah, parks are definitely the worst place to use them. Mm -hmm. I tested that out. That I got uh, some commons, a Diplotator, and a T-Rex, but that was probably just luck. You know what? Even getting a Rex in the park, that's lucky. At least you didn't get Gripasuchus. <laughs> I think I got a Pterodon when I was near a park with an Epic Incubator. Mm. So it was okay, but again, I don't know that we're going to use him a lot in the meta. It's just for unlocking. As far as optimal use, I feel like it really depends on the player and what you're looking for. Um, mm -hmm. Spamming commons at nighttime in like locals two and four seem like the best use for those to me. Um, you can target uh, Dinochirus for Dilowerchirus, um, Sarcasuchus for Sarcarixes, which got a pretty nice buff this patch. Yeah. And then you're still pulling the global spawns, which are Velo and Stego. And then if you're over in Local 4, instead of the Dino and the Sarco, you're pulling uh, Parasaur and Allosaur, which both also have great hybrids. Mm -hmm. And you get so many spawns plus the natural spawns while you're moving around. and like They're super cost efficient. They're just a great deal to use. But do I, but do you, you don't really want to use those at home, though. I mean, you pretty much want to be moving, don't you? Because, I mean, really, you, you just, you're going to run out of darts if you're sitting at home unless you're on a stop. Right, exactly. Um, I tend to use mine. I'm out walking the dog, you know, a couple miles every night, and I'm constantly running common sense while I'm doing so. Yeah, it's smart. Uh, common sense. Are... <laughs> I, 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 I've been really liking common sense. I just used... I bought a pack last night, um, although it was raining outside, so... so that was kind of fortunate. I got I got these and stuff. I didn't get an epic yet, but I got, like, what, four or five rares? And all good rares, too. And then just a bunch of dino chiruses, since I live in local, too. So yeah, this is probably the best way to farm um, Dino Kairoses. But when you think of it, um, it's kind of like uh, popping common caps. It's kind of like, since like the spawn rates are the same, we're assuming that it doesn't make too much of a difference. But it just gives People you more think it's a options. Waste. Yeah. yeah, it just gives you more spawns in general. I'm trying to find. Have we seen any problems with them? I've seen some reports on the forums that yeah. people are having problems. I haven't seen any problems with them. Have you guys? Yeah, I had one. I was one of the posters in the forum. I had one where the rare capsule I popped, it like went for 12 minutes before I saw a single spawn. And so I, I had to close and reopen the game in order to get it to actually start giving me the spawns. But I missed a bunch. Oh, no. My problem is I'm not getting good spawns, but, you know, that's not... Oh, no. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out like I feel like there's a reason with the locals I'm noticing just quickly that local 2 is fat dinosaurs stunning and then armor piercing and local 1 is basically just counter attack like most of them have counter attack or stunning mm, is it? yeah local 1 Kentro like like Thornax, um, sure, and then Majenga, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's that's not local. That's local one. Majenga. Just... Wait, Majenga's local one. Oh, yeah. Sukis, yeah, Sukis is. Yeah, Majenga Sukis. So, uh, anyway, so when talking about like buying stuff at the shop, whether it's like incubators or scents. Darts, no one's gonna buy darts, but anyways, no. um, just in, in terms of our budgets, split between cents and coins. Um, high, lower levels they might choose coins, but during higher levels, you'll probably choose um, the cent because, like, usually I have enough coins upgrade if not like in a day or two I'll have enough coins to upgrade something at a higher level but 
I feel like that's a bit backwards. I feel like low level players yeah, they true. have the extra coins, they want the DNA so they can start leveling things before true. the costs get high. And then higher yeah. level players, they're gonna need well, I, I feel like I need both the coins and the DNA, but um it, it's really just finding a happy medium between the two. You can't go all in on either side without running out of the other well, and also to add to that, it also depends on if you're gonna if you're spending the money to buy like the one time offers when you level up, and or if you're just being a free to play player, because if you're being free to play, you know it's hard to come by cash to begin with, and then also to add to it, you have to choose between whether you're gonna buy coins to do an upgrade on a dinosaur, or if you want to buy the scent capsules to slowly work up DNA for ones that you might not see all the time. Mm-hmm. Also in this patch, we do have more methods of getting coins. We I, we get more coins now since, as we mentioned before, uh, the coins, they're like split between the vent ones, the normal ones, and then the chest is fixed now, although I'm, I don't know if it was intentionally or unintentionally. But yeah, we do have quite um, some new sources of getting coins. I I has something to do with the uh, spoofer situation now that they're, you know, uh, they've been, we've had like three band waves or four band waves and then now they're put in their own arena. Are they giving us some more coins? I think yeah. that's a good reason behind it all because that was really the only thing keeping spoofers in check before since they have access to virtually unlimited DNA. Mm-hmm. Right, I like so... that the chests worked. This mm -hmm. is the oh, first yeah. time this last few yeah. days these the chests have worked for me. Like I've got one six hours later, another one will pop up, and I enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, I cannot stand the hassle of making sure you hit your cat your daily cap before you hit yes, a chest. I hate that. Just to ensure you get maximum <laughs> yeah. coins, but it, that's again one of those quality of life improvements that they gave us. That's either gonna well, one, it's gonna keep players around. And two is going to make them talk and maybe, you know, convert new players to playing. Agreed. Yeah. Sure. Although, honestly, I kind of don't like the one chest every six hours. Um, I kind of would like it better if we could go back to you have the 24 hours to get the four, however many, instead of, well, you got, you know, you have to get this one six hours and you got to wait another six hours. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, People do sleep at some point, yeah, and yeah. I'm not going to get out of my house at 3 to 9 o'clock in the morning to go pick up a chest just because that's the only time I can get it. <laughs> I still keep waiting for them to change the chest so that they actually like give you a variable amount of coins. I'd almost rather like a 10% you know, chance to get 200,000 or something crazy. Um, you know, maybe that's way too high. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> it would just be—it'd be nice to have a little more variable. I mean, it's great that it's always consistent. And you always know what you're getting. But I mean, it's a treasure chest. Like, shouldn't it, you know, kick out mm -hmm. something awesome once in a while? Yeah, I'd yeah. like an epic scent from one. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, that would be a very interesting idea. And I do agree with the random amounts. But uh, one thing I will say though, with the one every six hours versus the you know four or whatever it was every 24 um the way it worked out higher level players actually get more coins because it's based on player level for the one every six hours whereas when it was the four every 24 hours it was a flat two and a half thousand coins for everybody yeah mm-hmm to balance that um just giving coins to higher level players or you know, uh, lower levels, people who are just starting out. But then again, people who just start out, they probably don't need that much coins, to be honest. Remember when you only, it only cost 100 to create <laughs> something? It was so nice. Oh the good old days. No, I, I do not remember that. <laughs> now it's 100,000. Oh, no. Oh, boy. It's, it is kind of cool, though, that, like, I mean, obviously, Ludia was listening. That was a big complaint in, mm -hmm. you know, Pokemon Go that basically you'd always run into issues with you level up and nothing you're not better at anything <laughs> like there's no reason mm -hmm. to like level up 
Whereas here, I mean, you get better at, you know, higher level of darts and more coins and better incubators. I mean, it's nice that it's scaled. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The darts is one thing that I wish they would make it where it does increase with level because, I mean, as I start leveling up, there's a lot more that I get to dart or that I, you know, feel I need to dart. And 140 just sometimes doesn't cut it whenever you go on a long stretch and you just keep darting like everything that comes up anyway. Especially with sense, you you feel like perhaps they are going to come up with a dart increase at some point. Um, I remember, I think at least, I don't know, it feels kind of weird that VIPs or something, or at least like there isn't more than one type of dart. I know I was talking with someone that I introduced to this game and they were like, that the darts should have a small chance of doing it critical, which would like double their how much DNA you got from them or something. That would be a great idea. Yeah, like um, for example, po uh, Pokemon Go or just Pokemon in general, you could have uh, yeah. different kind of balls. You got you know your great balls, ultra balls, master balls, etc., uh, park balls, whatever. Um, that uh, increase or you know have a higher chance of getting Pokemon. And, you know, all we just have is just normal darts. But, uh, yeah, that, that could be a possibility. I mean, now we have um, inventory now. Um, it, we only have sense in there at the moment, but they, they could totally, like, put in new stuff in there, new items and such. So, yeah, that, that could totally be a possibility. Um, How many of us would pay for a dart storage increase? Oh, yeah. Guilty. Oh, uh, I would. I like uh, same. I think it should be part of the VIP, you know. Or even just be, leveling up. If, if you had 200 or something for being VIP, because, you know, there's not a lot of perks to being VIP. And with the extra distance, you're getting the dart more and you're running out of darts mm -hmm. quicker. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And, like, your range is uh, higher, so you, you're probably darting more dinos than your, uh, the average player. So you do run out of darts more when you're VIP. So, yeah, so if Ludi is cool. listening, if Ludi is listening, we'd all pay <laughs> for it. <laughs> well, see, I also, especially with the scent capsules too, I mean, like if I'm using it at work, I have to watch how many scent capsules I even use because I go through 140 darts after like two, three scent capsules. It doesn't take long at all. Yeah, uh, for like half of my time using scent capsules is just running to <laughs> to get uh mm -hmm. to get more darts. Yeah. While we're back on scent capsules, yeah, scent we, capsule. we kind of glossed over uh, epic ones when we were discussing them. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mentioned that commons seem optimal to use at nighttime, particularly in locals two and four, since they have the yep. best nighttime commons. Uh, epics, on the other hand, I feel like are optimal during the day, and it's you know. Uh, it, it's going to depend on what you're looking for, but Local 1 is absolutely incredible. You have Sinoceratops, Kintro, yeah. and uh, Rex as Kef. like good spawns. <laughs> Concavenator is the one that, you know, it's like, yeah, it has a cell, but it's not that useful right now. <laughs> one day. But uh, I... they're, they're a great deal they're a little pricier but i think they're well worth it mm -hmm. um i've seen people reporting you know getting i think logan actually said he got eight epics from one capsule earlier today wow yeah i was eating total four rex a sino two concavenator and a kentro wow <laughs> That's a uh, I, mean, I feel when i've been out doing them i feel that you get a better spawn rate if you're walking in straight lines and covering a further distance. I did two, and the first one that I did, I went in a straight line the whole way through the town and got a lot more spawns. And on the way back, I weaved in through different wee areas and had about half of the spawns. Oh. And I wondered oh. if it was anything like Pokemon Go, where your eggs tend to hatch faster whenever you're in a straight line. That's one interesting. Thing 
Uh, one thing I did notice when I was using my uh, epic sense in local one, I'll just like uh, I just have one block. I'm just walking, block, and then there was this point, exact point where where it spawned to Edmontos, and then when I came back to that point, that exact point, I got to Edmontos again. It it could be just it could be just total coincidence, but I I thought it was interesting, so I just uh, I'm gonna uh, bring that up. Yeah, Logan should test that and walk that same route. He got his uh, eight epics to confirm. <laughs> I'm going there oh, tomorrow nice. morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, magic like it wouldn't be good if the scent capsules changed where the locals were. That'd be horrible. Mm. Or at least for some people. I did see one complaint from, uh, I think it was a commenter on one of Post's videos on YouTube, actually. But uh, mm -hmm. they were saying they didn't like that it was tied to locals and it made them useless. Which I, I kind of see where they're coming from if you live in an area where you don't have a whole lot of locals available to you. But for the most part, it just lets you like double down on what you really want to find. So I feel like that's a great use. But I have all four locals within a short drive, so I don't have any complaints finding anything. Could that yeah. be knowledge-based, too? Like, do they know where their locals are, maybe? That could very oh. much be part of it. Hmm. Yeah. It could. Because if you put two incubators in the store, one that was targeted and one that was not, I would guarantee they were not going to buy the one that's not. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I get what they're saying, but I don't know. It's helpful if you know what your locals are. I didn't, yeah. I didn't even care what my locals were until now, until the Sin Capsules came out. I, before that, I wasn't even... I would tr just drive around and try and find epics. So, uh, for example, um, uh, every time they come out with a like a themed incubator, there always be people who just come in Discord and just ask, oh, is this incubator worth it? Uh, for example, you got the Rex one, the one that we have right now, which is the heavy armored one. Uh, some folks asked uh, earlier today about that. And like no one ever asks, well, not no one ever, but uh, like in comparison, no one asks as much normal, just general, generic epic incubators worth it. Because there's just so much you could get from that thing. Like the variety, the pool just gets diluted so much. So people always, you know, wonder about the, the, one, the focus ones instead. Which makes... I think diluted is the key word there. You know, you just, if they were not linked to a local, Scott, then no. it would be so diluted. You would have no clue what you'd get. Yeah. I don't even use the sense if they were not uh, local oriented or not use as much, I guess. Yeah, I know that... because it would kind of suck using a scent in, you know, like local one and drawing in just everything from every other local and or global spawns just in general instead of it being just put down to one local and global spawns and then to add as well for the incubators I won't buy just a generic rare epic incubator just because there's such a massive pool that it draws from the chance that you're going to spend you know like at my point 800 cash or 4000 cash and get what you need it's not very likely and I just and I basically I don't remember when I did this I calculated how much at, at least level 13 which is my level it costs basically thirty dollars for any epic incubator which mm, for each wait till they get to 50 oh no oh boy another thing Brian mentioned that I like about the scent capsules is uh he said he drives around looking for epics beforehand and didn't care which local he was in. I feel mm -hmm. like the capsules reward players for getting out and walking a lot more. Because if you're driving, you know, it, you're going to have to pull over and stop to dart. Yeah, you're going to get the double spawn, but you still have to stop and take the time. And it's not safe, of course, so don't do it. But if you're walking, you, you can walk at a leisurely pace, in my experience, and still get your double spawns. And you can stop and dart things, and it, it's... a benefit to actually you know getting out and moving versus driving around 
I think Ludia even mentioned in their post that you if you're if you're driving and going too fast, then you'll pass them up. Yeah, they did. I've even walked past and lost a couple of common spawns that I would kind of didn't care about, but you know I would have darted if they didn't disappear. But you know I kept walking with the dog, and by the time I finished darting the first one, I was out of range for the second, and it disappeared on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do and uh, I tested it. Uh, coming home from work today, um, doing 55 on the service road like normal. I can normally click and dart at a dyno on the way and pull over. Once I get to a spot I can, I can, you know, if I see a Rex or something on the way home, stop, grab it, you know, not a problem. But with the sync capsule doing 55 miles an hour, by the time the dyno fully spawns, it's already out of circle and it's already gone once it's out of your, uh, 50 meter circle I think that's about what it is yeah I should probably clarify I, I definitely don't <laughs> just drive and dart at the same time or anything oh no uh, no it's it I commute to and from work and then often I'll I'll jump in the car with my my wife and she'll drive around and I, I'll catch dinos in the way so but you're right I mean you, you really do miss them when when you have a scent capsule up and and you're moving too fast I mean it really does encourage people to get out there and walk more mm. Uh, anyways, um, so uh, before we end this, uh, let's just talk about one more topic: the uh, event drop reworks. How was all of your uh, irritator darting? How'd that go? I mean, I loved the irritator. I'm sorry, Dweb. I love the irritator, or Nate. I managed to find them um, pretty quickly since you know we only had one day to find 18. Mm -hmm. um, it oh. kind of, I don't know. It's mixed feelings because it's not concentrated in parks anymore. But, you know, mm -hmm. at the same time, you have a whole lot more area that you can look for them, which is nice. Because, you know, some places aren't fortunate with parks. They might have one or two small parks that only have one or two spawn points apiece, and then it, it's almost impossible for them to get all their attempts in. Yeah. What irritator DNA all I saw was flyers. <laughs> <laughs> It was kind of it funny was... to read the comments on Ludia's uh, page, though. I mean, they were talking about how, well, we're, we're Canadian, so when we have parks everywhere. We didn't even anticipate the fact that people wouldn't have parks everywhere. <laughs> no, there's, parks no park, there's no parks here, but the, ever since they've changed it, this is the first time that I've actually finished an event because I'm not having to drive 10, 15, 20 miles to a park and then maybe not even get the spawns. Nice. Well, see, even to go with that, like, the park, I live right by a park, and according to the game, it's not a park, so yeah. I have to drive to the next town over about 10 miles. It's not too far, but I still have to drive to the next town over to get to two different parks and just hope that in, especially for, like, the rares, that if I stay there for, you know, two or three hours, that the spawns will change, and I might get the spawns for the day, but Otherwise, I normally didn't even finish the rare ones just because there wasn't ever the dinos there that I wanted, and I drive 10 miles there, 10 miles back, just to pick up maybe three or four of the event that day. Yeah, I, I had a decent time with the Irritators, although, like, that day, um, I had class from... 12 in the morning to 9 o'clock at night before class I only darted 2 and like between 9 and 10 uh, I, had, um, I had my mom drive me uh, for once just to get dinos and it took me like 30 minutes just to get all the like all the rest 16 or so irritators so it, I, I guess it really helps um, although I do live in Canada I have a lot of parks around me but yeah I would imagine this would help uh, a lot of other folks without parks I think the most frustrating thing about the new drops is that you keep seeing blue right now currently. You keep seeing blue on the map and going, oh, what's that? And then you're like, oh, it's just another bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, so uh, I guess we're, we're, we're going on a bit long. So how about let's uh, just end it over here. So thank everyone for listening to our first episode of Meta Minute. And we should be uploading, I think, weekly. That should be um, it should be safe, at least weekly. Uh, for now, if we 
do better on this and if you guys like it we might have more episodes per week but uh anyways i'd like to thank everyone who came on today to talk about the game the updates give us their impressions and obviously this is our first episode so please please don't judge us too harshly on it but uh anyways next week uh we think we're gonna do um some balance stuff about the meta some dino changes our thoughts on it um so please look forward to that one we we're trying to get a guest on the show for next week that should be interesting but anyways thank you all for listening and tuning in to the first episode of meta minute Uh, please subscribe if you're new and if you did enjoy it please leave us a thumbs up we really appreciate it and if you have any you know suggestions or feedback please uh, leave them in the comments down below we're we're, uh, gonna go over them obviously this is our first episode so it's kind of rough it's kind of rough but uh, we're trying and we'll uh, improve as we go so anyways uh, see you next week on the podcast and I personally I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow on my YouTube channel uh, Postmon for a new video